It looks like the rabbit's foot didn't help much. Not that time, anyway. In the end of the playground period didn't end the argument between George and Alan. They took the rabbit's foot up again with Miss Carr, their teacher. George says, I told no good. A rabbit's foot is just a silly old superstition. But Alan wouldn't give up. What is a superstition, anyway? And what is a fact? Are all superstitions true, or are just some of them true? Now, George tells me he thinks me a fact or something he believes is a fact. Yes, Alan? Well, last week when we talked about glass, you said it was a non-conductor of the electricity. I think that's a fact, isn't it? Ah, uh, we did talk about that. And we can add that to our list. Now, who else can give me another statement? Something he calls a superstition. Yes, Marion? Well, there's a superstition about the ground six weeks more of cold weather. Yes, that is a fairly common saying. Now, we have two more statements to write. No trouble getting a lot of statements to add to her list. And by the next minute, arrange the statements in a chart on the blackboard. The class had mentioned eight items in all. And from these, they had chosen six statements for class discussion. First, there was the original rabbit's foot idea. A rabbit's foot brings good luck. Next was an example of a fact. Glass is a non-conductor of electricity. Then, if the groundhog sees his shadow on the 2nd of February, there will be six more weeks of cold weather. Miss Carr asked George to hand out individual record sheets so everyone could study all the statements very thoughtfully. Somebody had suggested the statement, a pint of milk weighs more than a pint of cream. Then there was the idea that hot water will freeze quicker than cold water. And last on the list was, water expands when it freezes. Miss Carr asked everyone to think about each statement and to check off each one on the list. This would give each pupil a record showing, I believe that statement. I do not believe this one. I'm doubtful about this, and so on. Very quickly, everyone completed the lists of the six statements the class had chosen. And now Miss Carr could add up what the whole class thought about each statement, from the rabbit's foot idea, clear on down the line to the end. These are the opinions of the whole class. Now that we've recorded our opinions, I think we should investigate to find out whether or not our opinions are based on good reasons. First, how about a rabbit's foot? Will carrying one bring good luck? It seems to me there's one way to find out. Alan? Yes, Miss Carr? Will you meet the ten students who would volunteer to carry them for a week? Now, this is the first step in our experiment. Yes, this will be an actual scientific experiment to find out if carrying a rabbit's foot will bring good luck to the ten volunteers. Like many experiments, this one will extend over a period of time. Miss Carr wrote the experiment. George listed the students who will not carry rabbit's feet and Alan listed those who will carry them for a whole week. At the end of the week, each student will report what happened. Meanwhile, Marion wrote on the board the names of her group. Their job will be to look up weather reports, to find out if the groundhog seeing his shadow really governs the weather. They'll report next week, too. But some of the statements do not take so much time to investigate. We can test this statement right away. Glass is a non-conductor of electricity. First. Alan and Larry test their batteries and circuit. It's all right, the bulb lights up. And if a metal rod is put in the circuit, it lights again. So we know that metal is a conductor of electricity. But what about glass? Nothing happens. No light. Now, do you believe that glass is a non-conductor of electricity? There's no doubt about it now, because our experiment proved that statement to be a fact. While Alan put away the electricity experiment things, Miss Carr recorded the result. Now the students were basing these new opinions on evidence, experiments, guesswork anymore. A week later, Marion and her group were ready with their report on the groundhog statement. And while Marion was copying her records, Miss Carr called for individual reports on the rabbit's foot experiment. 
Alan was first. I was one of the ten who carried a rabbit's foot. I found a quarter last Saturday. I call that a... I didn't carry one. On Wednesday, I won the school poster contest, and on Thursday, I got the pretty low mark in history. I guess that's good luck and bad luck. I did carry a rabbit's foot. The only unusual thing that happened was that we moved from one apartment to another. One by one, all the pupils reported on what had happened to them during the week. And they finally agreed that carrying a rabbit's foot doesn't really affect the daily events of their lives. So their experiment proved the first statement to be just a superstition. Marion, would you like to give the report for your group now? Well, we studied the United States weather report for the last 10 years for our state. Then we organized our material. And this is a good job of research. For every Groundhog Day, or February 2nd, the weather was listed. If it was fair, the groundhog would have seen his shadow. And if it was cloudy, he couldn't have seen his shadow. But shadow or not, the temperature never varied more than two degrees from normal. The groundhog had nothing to do with spring weather. When we seek to answer our questions by observation and research and experimentation, as we have been doing, we are using the scientific method. The scientific method is our most valuable weapon in the search for truth. Modern man uses the scientific method in research to help him base his opinions on facts. For everything he can observe, he tries to discover the natural cause. In the search for I never saw before. In learning the truth out a rabbit's foot is a good luck charm, we use the scientific method. And right on down the list, the use of the scientific method gave us the truth. Now, why not use what we have learned to discover the truth about the last three states? Does a pint of milk weigh more than a pint of cream? Try it at home for yourself. Here's another. Will hot water freeze quicker than cold water? Try it yourself. Don't be satisfied with just anybody's guess. Does water really expand when it freezes? Try this experiment yourself. It's simple. Do you believe this is the right answer? Well, it was Alan with his rabbit's foot who started us off on the search for facts. And out of it, he learned the scientific method. And so did we. How many believe this is the world we live in?